listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. Today is a Bree's Big Question Day. Yeah. We haven't done a Bree's Big Question in a while. No, we really yeah. haven't. It's been a long time. So it's this is this is going to be fun, and it's a very uh, seasonally appropriate question. I'm not going to spoil it for you, Bree. Oh, you so, want me to I just take, take it away? It away. Cool. Yeah, go okay. for it. So it is back to school season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mid-August, the International Center campus is on the same in the same area actually as a Catholic high school. And so when this time of year rolls around, it's always a bigger pain to like find a parking spot <laughs> because they all roll in at a certain yeah. time mm-hmm. but take your life um, into your hands exactly. the street to no get in the building. doubt about that amen yeah. sister <laughs> but a lot of you are either recent college grads or currently are enrolled in college or your moms or whatever and so today what we're going to be talking about is lutheran education sweet and this, it's a big question, but it's kind of a softball because I think we all can agree on what the answer is before we even talk about it. Hmm. And that is, does Lutheran education make you a Lutheran? Oh, so that is not a softball, Brie. That is a very, is a that's a big question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I, at the, at the beginning of this, my initial reaction is, it doesn't no. it doesn't really it doesn't really matter like everybody's journey as i'm sure we will learn today and as i've been speaking with people on social media over the past the course of the past couple days every every lutheran's sort of educational journey is different and Mm -hmm. so i don't necessarily believe that your experience or lack thereof in lutheran education like makes or breaks you as a lutheran So today we're going to each sort of talk about our own experiences in Lutheran education. And then from there, sort of talk about what others within the lounge have been saying about their own experiences with Lutheran education. So So we should clarify terms probably before we get started here. Okay. Because I love clear definitions. (laughs) When you say Lutheran education, you are meaning parochial Lutheran schools, K through 12 or pre-K through 12 and Concordia universities. Yes. So primarily not, we're not talking about Sunday school. We're not necessarily even talking about like Lutheran homeschool here. Um, Confirmation classes, adult ed, you know, that's not the Lutheran education we're talking about. So according to a resource that I was able to access on lcms.org, there was a recent, it was an infographic maybe, or just a data set that was put out of different Lutheran education locations, entities, I don't know what you want to call it. But according to this report that was put out by schools ministry, we are today going to be talking about the Lutheran early childhood centers of which in the United States there are 1741. We're going to be talking about Lutheran elementary schools, which of which there are 828. Um, the 97 Lutheran high schools, and then the seven Lutheran colleges and universities in the Concordia University system. Okay. Um, Thank you so, for clarifying. Yes, because yes, of course. if we were going to talk about just Lutheran education in general, I would probably have a different answer. It does make it a bigger question. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Lutheran yeah. education yeah. makes you a Lutheran. Fair enough. <laughs> if you, if you enough. haven't heard the word of God from uh, somebody, right. Right. <laughs> it's so, very hard to be a Lutheran. <laughs> and these are, these are, yes, these are distinctly LCMS Lutheran educational institutions. Okay. Officially. Right. Whether now they I have to are my or answer. not is another story. But <laughs> anyway, so I guess I would like to pull the, the co-hosts here. What has your experience in, I guess we'll say LCMS education, what was that like? Are you a K through eight or did you go to Lutheran high school? Did you go to a Concordia? For me personally, I am generally a product of Lutheran education for most of my life. I went to a Lutheran grade school in starting in kindergarten, went all the way up through eighth grade. I actually went to public school the first two years of high school, but then finished up at a an LCMS high school 
in my junior and senior years. And then I went to a Concordia, Uni- Concordia University, Chicago mm-hmm. um, yeah. for four years. Mm-hmm. So I am I am largely a product of Lutheran education and that probably surprises people maybe i don't know but if that if that's any indicator of how lutheran you are um yeah so sarah let's start with you let's talk about your lutheran education experience yeah so i'm i'm very close to you on the spectrum of a lutheran education educatedness Except that I've gone to Lutheran school for every year of my Lutheran education, of every year of my education. So early childhood, all the way through whatever grade 16 or whatever graduating from college is. So I was at the same Lutheran parochial school attached to my church from early childhood through eighth grade. And then I went to one of the Lutheran high schools in the Metro Detroit system, Lutheran Westland. Um, not Lutheran West, Lutheran Westland. There was a West until it closed, but anyway. And then also Concordia, Chicago for yes. my years of college. And if I do end up getting a master's degree, which has been in the back of my mind for a very long time, it will probably also be at a Lutheran institution, likely a seminary for mm-hmm. theology. Yeah, let's not forget those graduate level uh, yes. <laughs> places as well. Concordia Seminary, St. Louis, and Concordia theological seminary that's true you didn't include those i initially. didn't include those yeah yeah, yeah. But those are those are world-class institutions yes. as well yes they are so i am very thankful for my lutheran education mm-hmm. there are days uh, especially when i was a ungrateful teenager that i i may have wished that i was at a public high school because mm-hmm. there were just more opportunities for a wider variety of classes just because it you know triple the size of my small little Lutheran high school that graduated a class of 56 people. Yep. So, I mean, there's, there's obviously advantages and disadvantages both ways. Um, same thing at Concordia. I mean, there's just different opportunities, but I'm so thankful for my time at Concordia as well, being able to do everything I was able to do and mm-hmm. be in Capella and do all the music stuff with, you know, super high level musicians without actually having to be a music major which totally your jam if you don't go to i mean if you go to a state public university a lot of the times you can't be in the uh, really high level music programs without being some level of music major or minor and i wasn't interested in that so nice super thankful for all of that really cool yeah cool made me a hymn nerd how about you aaron <laughs> I am at the opposite end of the spectrum from you guys. Uh, for for putting us on a spectrum, uh, so <laughs> maybe I, a continuum might be a better continuum. Term. Might be a better continuum. Term. <laughs> scale. Uh, yeah. So I I have gone to Lutheran schools, middle school. That mm-hmm. was that was my experience. So grades six, seven, and eight. Mm were my experiences with Lutheran schools. And I was at two schools, one school for six and seven, and then a different school for grade eight. Hmm. Excellent. (laughs) I mean, uh, middle, I feel like uh, it's somewhat hard to talk about that because like nobody likes middle school. So I'm not sure I, I mean, I can't really blame that on the on its lutheranness you want to be able to talk about that you want to be fair i mean it was middle school so i exactly so that's that's my experience with with lutheran education personal firsthand experience excellent (laughs) yeah what about you rachel so i gotta say y'all who grew up with lutheran schools at your beck and call everywhere you were Mm. very very blessed because i think whether or not you're able to go to lutheran schools is largely a matter of geography mm-hmm. and partially mm-hmm. also a matter of economics. But mm-hmm. because I grew up all over the world mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, it's a, if there, if there was a Lutheran school and we fit the age profile for that particular school, we'd usually go. So first three years of school were in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. There was no Lutheran school there. So I did mm-hmm. not go to Lutheran school. Then we moved back to the U.S., spent a year in the D.C. area. There was a Lutheran school. It's closed now, but it was open back in the 80s and 90s. So Ooh. I went to fourth grade in Lutheran school. Yeah. That's a great year. That though. is such I'm a good year. It was a wonderful year. I really loved it. Hmm. Then we moved again. No Lutheran school. Then we moved back to the D.C. area, back to our wonderful little Lutheran school. And I had just graduated sixth grade. 
So all my siblings went to Lutheran school, but I didn't. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So it was sort of, at, fourth grade was actually the only year I went to any sort of Lutheran school until I went to Concordia University Ann Arbor. It was Concordia College when I started, Concordia mm-hmm. University when I graduated. And then I suppose, even though I got my master's from a public university, it kind of counts as Lutheran school because my husband was at seminary at the time, mm-hmm. the Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne. Mm, I forgot the <laughs> last time. Sorry. <laughs> Is it me in front of that? I don't know. So even no, there's not. <laughs> um, so even though I was taking classes, you know, a couple miles away at Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne, I was going to chapel and Gemütlichkeit mm. and all the rest over sure. at seminary, and so that was sort of also a a, an, a formative Lutheran education experience mm. for me. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm in the right in the middle of our spectrum slash continuum, and that <laughs> I had some exposure to Lutheran schools, but not. Anywhere near as ma- as many years as, as Sarah and Bree. Yeah, but it was it was great. What experience I did have was wonderful. I'm glad that you uh, brought up sort of by proxy being a seminarian because I'm gonna tell you what between working from home over the last 15 months and like <laughs> sort of what's the word? It's not proctoring, auditing, just like <laughs> listening to math classes. <laughs> Like, I am a biblical scholar because oh, of yeah. the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I was an English major, but that meant that I got to proofread papers. So right. I, got, I got a seminary education. Yeah. Just by reading all the, all the papers before they got turned in. So. Yep. Nice. Yep. It was, yeah. That's great. So I'm, I'm counting it. I'm counting a year. Mm-hmm. I'm counting a year. You should like That's apply it. to have an honorary master's. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do they give those? No. Like, does anyone no. have honorary masters? <laughs> honorary doctorates. Not Matt. Like, well, we can make that a thing, probably. Right. We know people. We That's know people right. in pla- and places. <laughs> this is totally off the topic, but we should come up with yeah. our own academic award. You know how, like... They award the saber of boldness or the Christus primus or something. We should come up with an award the and just saber of boldness. award it at some event somewhere yeah. for okay. Lutheran I women. I do. We should totally you do research that. Who gives that out? Mm. And start. Start really. The Nantes Canto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was an aside. So no, yeah, I'm, here for that. I'm here for it. <laughs> so I don't know if you. So I I took. Basically, these same questions to Instagram in my stories. And this was easily the the polls upon which I there was the most participation. Like hmm. I got so much information from people that it was even difficult to sort of distill hmm. everything down into very specific terms. So I mm-hmm. apologize. It may seem a little ambiguous today. And based upon what I have encountered over the last couple days like i'm going to be saying things today that inevitably someone out there listening is going to be like that what are you talking about that was not my experience i'm going to do that right now yeah like, <laughs> just throw it's i i know full well that that's what you it's, people that's what it's gonna be <laughs> so i know outright like that's how it is so what i found was i i basically put out these polls Did you attend a Lutheran elementary school experience? Did you have a Lutheran secondary educational experience? And or did you have a Lutheran LCMS college or university experience? Mm -hmm. Um, Based on the respondents, a majority of people who responded to these questions, most went to a Lutheran elementary school A clear majority of respondents did not go to a Lutheran high school. That's interesting. And a majority. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. there are. There's less than a hundred high schools. Yeah. Yeah. But a majority it was it was neck and neck. It was probably almost 50-50 of respondents, a majority did go to a CUS college or university, Hmm. including the recently shuttered Selma, Bronxville, Hmm. and Portland, all of which I'm just going to say this to get out ahead of it. Like those are tremendously sad and Mm -hmm. yet 
tremendously complicated losses. Yep. And so I do want to be sensitive to that. Um, mm-hmm. In terms of respondents, we heard from a lot of people who are grads from Concordia, Chicago, yeah. Seward. We had a couple of Mequon alums, um, a couple of Ann Arbor alums. And then I think I got somebody who went to Concordia St. Paul and one person who graduated from Portland. One of the other questions that I I had asked when I was polling on people's involvement in Lutheran education Mm -hmm. was basically, what did you like? What did you dislike? So I don't I mean, Sarah, obviously you have alongside me probably the most experience in Lutheran education, at least from an elementary slash secondary experience perspective. What did you like about it? What did you dislike about it? Without, I mean, I don't think you're going to be disparaging or anything. No. I mean, in grade school, at least, and my grade school went up to eighth grade. And totally, side note, some people call it grade school and some people call it elementary school. And I've never figured out why. But I don't know if we can Mm. answer that question here. It seemed to be a regional thing Mm. because we called it grade school in Michigan. I don't know. Anyway. Like elementary plus middle equals grade school. So, yeah, that would make sense. differently, I think. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. That would make sense. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. (laughs) Through my entire experience through college, having regular chapel services probably Mm. ranks at the top of the list. I know when I graduated from college and went into the working adulting realm and did not have chapel anymore, Mm. it was this huge like void in my life Mm. that I didn't realize (laughs) I was going to miss that badly. And so when I came to work here, I was like, oh, chapel again this is wonderful <laughs> it is it is such a perk it is I, a huge yes. perk yes especially when you're used to it from mm-hmm. literally the time you're you know three to when you're 21 right. you have this constant rhythm of going to services and you don't you don't even think about it until you don't have it anymore so sure. that probably ranks at the top of my list um i know the the quality of personalized education at least in my experience was very high because we had a very small class size, mm-hmm. I had seven people in my class through wow. most most of the middle school ages. I had a very, very small class. So that meant actually that we were combined with either the class above us or the class below us. That's cool. For a lot of our specialty, like um, science and uh, math, we were usually combined. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually got to do accelerated courses with um, cool. what ended up being my sister-in-law's family. So we're really close now, still, sure. you know, 20 sure. years later because I got to do those classes. So the, the the very specialized education and just the the friends that you make too, because it's close class sizes. And I see later in your notes, you're going to mention this. You can have a lot of bullying because of mm-hmm. that, because you get to know people really, really, really well. Mm-hmm. But you also end up with friendships that last you forever. Like yeah. I'm still friends with my friend from first grade. Like yeah. we have been friends. I have that too. Since first mm-hmm. grade, which yeah. is crazy to think about that there's been somebody in my life That I've known longer than nearly anybody else except my family. (laughs) Right. Right. That is crazy. Absolutely. There Um, are, you know, there are both sides to all of those coins, of course. You know, my mm -hmm. I I forgot to mention part of my experience with Lutheran schools is my kids attended Lutheran schools. Three different different Lutheran schools so far with mostly wonderful experiences, but some some downsides. I mean, faith formation, the teachers and the way they live their faith. Mm -hmm. And the family connections, all of that, so wonderful. But, you know, there's small class sizes, and that's great. One of my kids was the only kid in her class Mm. for part of her schooling. Which, when she was in a split where she was the younger split, like a K-1 split, she was really advanced. And then she went into a split where she was the older kid. Yes. And suddenly she's struggling to continue to uh, progress, you know, that yeah. so there's there's pluses and minuses. And then also with the lifelong friends, which is wonderful. Mm-hmm. My kids, we move around a lot. So those lifelong friends, they've been established. Those peer groups are established. And so when our kids come in, they always feel like the new kid. They mm-hmm. could be there for years and they're still the new kid. And so that's that's something, you know, I would caution Lutheran educators and school families to really find a way to reforge those friendship groups when new people come in because it can lead to some loneliness on the part of the newbie if they're if you've got people who have been together you know since kindergarten yeah yeah that was 
that was actually my experience, particularly in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Right. So I went to a new school oh, in eighth yeah, grade and it was in a small town mm-hmm. and everyone who was in who was in class had been had been each other's classmates yeah. since pre It's kind of hard to yeah. jump in and midstream. So, yeah. 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 I get that. So yeah. I say that not as a criticism, but just as a cautionary note. Like this was our experience. And if you are in a position where you are in a Lutheran school and can can influence that sort of thing, do what you can. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's really, yeah. Yeah. really a lot on the line there. Yeah. Speaking of of the cons, that being one of them, or at least a cautionary item, just having, I don't know about lesser opportunity, but very different and and maybe lesser opportunity just because of funding and teacher mm-hmm. availability. I know there were kids at my at the public high school in my area that were doing all kinds of yeah. fun stuff in these mm. crazy classes because yeah. they're a public school and they have funding and they have enough students to have more classes. Like, you know, they're, they're graduating classes, a thousand kids yes. and I'm mine mm-hmm. is 56. Like you're just not going to have the same opportunities to yep. do more advanced studies or different studies. Like I had a pretty generic <laughs> uh, curriculum in high school, which is fine. I mean, I'm, enjoyed it. Yep. But there were days that I wished I had I had other opportunities. So yeah. maybe no robotics robotics classes in, in yeah. NARA. But everyone in the school can sing really right. well. I mean like there's yes. <laughs> yeah. all of my kids, all of my kids can carry a tune and, you know, know how to listen for harmonies and sing. You know, it's like that part of their education, don't have to worry about that at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge plus yeah. for sure. <laughs> Yeah. So based on some of the uh, feedback that I got from others on Instagram, tend to agree that LCMS education, at least at the elementary level or grade school level, um, lays a very solid biblical foundation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, it is very, it is tremendously important for catechetical opportunities to occur in the home Mm -hmm. and I didn't necessarily get that as a kid growing up so I I credit a lot of my faith formation to the fact that I went to a Lutheran grade school from kindergarten through eighth grade Mm -hmm. like you think I'm a heathen now like (laughs) mm. imagine if I hadn't gone to a Lutheran grade school like you know you don't even you don't even want to know. And so also, yeah, a lot of people uh, mentioned how they appreciated those routine extra worship opportunities mm-hmm. like chapel. A lot of others cited the not necessarily smaller classes, but there was sort of that more individualized attention that people were able to get. And and one respondent even said she described her Lutheran elementary school class as being very tightly knit. Mm -hmm. And that resonated a lot with me because, I mean, we had, we had more than seven people in every class. We probably (laughs) had two classes of 40 for each grade. No, I'm sorry. Two classes of 20 for each grade. That's still Um, large. It's still, it's twice, maybe sometimes three times as large as what you were dealing with. But even then, like, there was still like a tight knittedness to Mm -hmm. it that I think lends itself to sort of those lifelong friendships, which I think were a huge benefit to uh, the Lutheran education experience. A lot of these schools are already tied to a church or an association of churches. And so to be able to get a high quality education in close proximity to word and sacrament, Mm -hmm. that that just rolls right off. It just comes out. It It just just comes out like (laughs) That's, I mean, that's a fantastic relationship to to be able to exist. I don't know what I just said, but it's helpful <laughs> that churches and schools can have that kind of relationship in the Lutheran realm. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for um, sure. I will say in terms of cons, some of the stuff that I did hear in terms of what people disliked about either elementary or secondary education Lutheran wise is the bullying there was i personally experienced like teacher student favoritism which was mm. kind of had an impact on me there were a couple people who responded that, that said look my my experience in lutheran education was actually hurtful wow. um i had one respondent who actually 
The one reason that she did not enroll at a Lutheran college or university is because how she was treated in Lutheran high school. Wow. Um, so there is, to sort of use a buzzword, there is some church hurt that can be found in Lutheran education. And so while I would tout the praises of at least Lutheran elementary education, there is a cautionary tale behind it in that it's not all sunshine and rainbows when you're and and you see that at at any age, um, mm -hmm. whether you go to a Lutheran school or not, each kid is going to go through their own sort of formative obstacles and challenges. And if you go to a L Lutheran school, whether elementary, secondary, or otherwise, you are not immune to those same things like bullying or favoritism or yeah drugs and or sex or <laughs> <Sanders Yeah. Rossi. laughs> growing and growing pains which are you know gonna hit people no matter where they are i mean i i won't i won't deny that certain of my I, this probably won't surprise you to hear but mm, at least three-fourths of my kids are, are nerds yes. i love nerds yeah but nerds sometimes have a rough go of it in school no yeah. matter where they are so yep. I won't I won't deny that it, it you know a couple of my kids have experienced some some social you know I would almost I'll almost put it up to the scale of bullying yeah in schools including Lutheran schools and yet I'm gonna say I got no regrets I think they all from our years of Lutheran schools they all received excellent academic foundation mm -hmm. in a spiritually nurturing environment like mm -hmm. there's no denying that that's what was advertised and what was received, <laughs> that they're all smart and they're all faithful. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I'm I'm right now as we're getting ready to move to yet another part of the country where there are no Lutheran schools available to us. Groton. Groton. <laughs> Groton. Groton. Like Groton potatoes. Oh. <laughs> Tell but but I'm Rotan. really, I'm really <laughs> grieving our lack of access to Lutheran education yeah. options right yeah. now. Yeah. And so those, uh, you know, if you're out there listening and you have a Lutheran school in your area and you're not currently taking advantage of it for your children, go look it up for my sake because I'm jealous of you. <laughs> Rachel, go in the grotten. <laughs> I will say though that in my personal experience with moving as we make the shift towards talking a little bit more about Lutheran secondary education or high school, depending on where you live, if you live in a well-funded school district, mm -hmm. in many ways, going to public school might, in my personal experience, going to public school was preferable, I want to say, to my years at the Lutheran high school. Although, I think the reasoning behind that is because I went to a public school that was in the well-funded school district mm. that had all of the extracurricular opportunities mm. and the elective opportunities that I would have never had access to had I gone to Lutheran High School, the, the Lutheran High School that I went to for the four years. And I, I know that not all Lutheran high schools are, not all Lutheran schools are created equal. It really, mm -hmm. yeah. um, it depends. There are, there's a lot of socioeconomics behind all of that, good, bad, or indifferent. And so I don't, I wouldn't necessarily discourage somebody from sending their kid to a Lutheran high school, but to just maybe be aware of the different offerings that each type of school can provide to them. Obviously, if you're going to, if you're receiving a public education, I think that there are some pros to that. Not only might there be additional opportunities uh, for the student, you do get an exposure in diversity of thoughts, backgrounds, faith traditions. I know that that can be scary to some people, that somehow we will lose sight of who we are as baptized children of God. But for me, I think that the two years that I spent in public high school did more for me in reinforcing my faith and allowing me to verbalize why I believe what I believe than I did when I attended a Lutheran high school. I can, I can see that for sure, because <laughs> I spent my entire upbringing till I was 21 essentially in a Lutheran bubble. Right. Getting out into the working world then 
as a 21 year old, it was a bit of culture shock. It's jarring. Mm-hmm. I it's very jarring. did not know how, like it took me a while to figure out how to actually live as a Lutheran mm-hmm. young woman in a world that doesn't really respect that very right. much. And right. it was weird. <laughs> I think yeah. so when I, I had gone to, I so I had graduated from eighth grade in the Lutheran church and started my freshman year at a public high school. And I think within days of starting at that school, I heard my first antagonistic comment towards Christianity. Mm-hmm. Like, I try not to get all culture warrior about stuff in, just in what? general. That? I don't. I know, right? <laughs> you don't try very hard. <laughs> No, but like I, I try, I, I try not to despair over yes. over things. This is true. But like in the public school system, it is no joke. Like mm-hmm. it, I got my fair share of antagonism because I was not ashamed. I was vocal about who I was, and so you learn over time. Like even those antagonistic interactions that I had, they allowed me to verbalize. The, what I believe and how I believe it with with grace with mm-hmm. to people you don't agree with. And so I think one of the things that I think is we are in such dire need of today is to be able to have conversations with grace to people we don't agree with. And we can still do that, I think, without like watering down or losing sight mm-hmm. of who we are in our in our faith identity. And also it's a, it's a pretty good way to, we, there are opportunities to witness as well. So I, I see both sides there. are I think there are pros and cons, at least from a secondary education perspective of the different environments. I really appreciate you sharing that part of your story because I've been, you know, struggling a little this summer. You all know, but I'm sure our listeners don't because why would they? But after after two wonderful, stressful years of homeschooling, we're going to be allowing our children to reenter uh, public education after we move. And that's really been very stressful for me because I'm a Lutheran school mom at heart. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. if I can't get the kids in a Lutheran school outside my home, I should have them in a Lutheran school in my home. And, you know, when we when we homeschool, we have chapel every day and it's one, you know, it's it's wonderful. And I, I'm so glad to have had the opportunity to be part of their formation in that way. But one of the things motivating our decision for this fall was wanting to make sure that our older two, especially who are in, you know, entering 10th and 11th grade this year, that they don't hit what you just described when they're out of our house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to be there for them when they hear that first disparaging comment so they can come home after school and hear have some milk and cookies and tell me all about it and we'll talk through Mm -hmm. this within the context of of our faith pull up the scripture say a prayer you know and that that desire to make sure that i shelter them and yet also prepare them for what they're going to experience out in the world that's been hugely motivational for me even as you know, we're very, I'm, I'm very on edge about this whole transition. So hearing your story and how that's seeing how you turned out to be a very sane, okay. <laughs> faithful, mostly. No, but faithful, I, fa- sane. I, let me switch that. <laughs> you are a faithful, sane, in parentheses, mostly, there. wonderful <laughs> human being. <laughs> well, then it's, it's great to hear your story and know that, that God used that experience to form you in the faith. Well, and I think it goes without saying, too, that if you are sending your children to through public education, whether or not it's because you don't live close to a Lutheran school or if it's because, you know, it's it can be pretty pricey depending on Mm -hmm. on tuition rates. Catechesis in the home and faith instruction in the home are critical Mm -hmm. pieces to the puzzle, especially when your kids are not getting that type of con- conditioning that type of education <laughs> <Yeah. brainwashing. laughs> like they don't have that kind of reinforcement in mm-hmm. in school and so i think that education outside of the home and inside of the, and inside the home need to go hand in hand mm-hmm. with with sort of the in-home instruction and in-home faith life nurturing 
yeah. sort of leading the charge on that. Well, and you know, as I'm thinking about it, I feel like the flip side of that coin would be equally valid. So if you're a family who is sending your kids to Lutheran high school, mm -hmm. there's opportunity within the home to say, let's let's consider how we are going to engage with people outside of the Lutheran bubble and let's talk about right. those. And are there's are there opportunities that we can actually seek out for your kids to be able to engage in that, even though they weren't going to get that in maybe the classroom, mm -hmm. but are those, I'm sh I feel confident that there's opportunities <laughs> right. <laughs> type of engagement that then can be put into perspective within, within the family. And sure. so doing that sort of, that sort of catechesis mm -hmm. is also possible. Sure. But again, maybe you have to be intentional about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And I mean, think intentionality is key. Very any key. which way you look at it. Um, yeah. That even if just because you have your kids in a Lutheran school doesn't mean faith formation shouldn't be happening at home. No, it you should know, be. That it's, you have yeah. not just officially outsourced all of your raising the kids in the faith responsibility. <laughs> right. <laughs> that it, might, ideally come it comes from shock. both, but it has to come from one. Yeah. Yes. This might come as a shock, but I saw a lot of the same sort of sinful bad choices happening <laughs> at the Lutheran high school yep. I was at. Yep. In addition to the public school yep. environment that I was at. So teenagers um, are gonna do stupid stuff yep. yeah. in, this, <laughs> in the way that middle schoolers will bully each other, high schoolers will get high and jump off stuff. Like yep. that's <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yep. Doesn't can we go back since this is a big question and things aren't yeah. off limits? Can we go back to the economic <laughs> side? Yeah, so I, was, education. I was actually going to touch on that more so from a CUS perspective, but we can talk about that now if you well, want. Well, just as a as a parent, like when we had the opportunity to have our children in Lutheran schools, we absolutely did that. We never had four in at once. We mm -hmm. had max we ever had in Lutheran school at the same time was three. Mm -hmm. And it was the largest monthly expense yes. aside from our mortgage. Mm hmm. And it was close to, you know, and that was, there's, there's financial aid available, but when you've got a ton of kids all in the same school, yeah. Yeah. it only goes so far. And I think that too often we assume that families that make those choices either for or against Lutheran education are doing it because they're either really in favor of forming their children in the Lutheran faith or they don't care. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> yeah. but there's, there's that other dimension as well that Lutheran schools, because they are not publicly funded, have to charge tuition and that those tuitions can really add up quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the more we're able to support Lutheran schools so that they can, you know, keep tuition low and have lots of financial aid available, the more we're able to offer scholarships. But then on the other side, the more we're able to understand and work with families who paying a tuition bill on top of their mortgage and groceries is never going to be something they can do. How can we? give them the benefits of Lutheran faith formation, even if they can't attend our Lutheran school and do that without stigma. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Absolutely. So we are going to move on to LCMS colleges and universities. We're just going to, we're just going to bring it home. <laughs> so I think by far the amount of feedback that I got to people who attended a Concordia college or university, like the, the pros of it, hands down were in the realm of like networking, mm. meeting people, making lifelong friends, finding your spouse, find I don't know why. <laughs> MRS <heard> degree. <laughs> MRS. Got me one of those. Like I got one of those. Um, <laughs> obviously, especially people I think who are in sort of these church worker roles mm -hmm. that went there are obviously benefiting whether you're a DCE, a deaconess, a pastor, that education that you receive at a Concordia is obviously going to benefit you in the long run and, and you'll be able to to get tons of value out of mm -hmm. that. But even then, like I didn't get a rostered church worker position at I got a degree in communications. I think mm -hmm. somebody who responded got their degree in business administration. And so <laughs> my degrees are in exercise science and graphic there arts. You go. So like <laughs> I do think that especially as we look at like church worker recruitment initiatives and mm -hmm. sort of growing the church and building up the number of, of seminarians and pastors that we ultimately have, which it, it, we're sort of reaching crisis level 
of you know pastoral shortages, mm-hmm. which and is church another, workers in general, too. right? Which is another yeah. story for another day. But I I still think that there is value to providing programs that are not necessarily education or pre sem or. Mm-hmm. Deaconess or or so or any of those to the church worker, the professional right. church worker, and so I, I think I think okay. some I think some congregations, some people would like to see a return to like when Concordia Chicago was Concordia Teachers College yeah. in River Forest. Mm-hmm. Like I think a lot of people want to see a return to that, or sort of a back to the basics. Let's give people the option to be church worker types uh, at these universities, and and maybe not offer much else. But having not graduated as a church worker from Concordia, I still think that there is a a lot of value to being able to attend a Concordia, but not necessarily taking that church worker route. Mm -hmm. I believe that it is a quality education. I feel like my undergrad studies benefit me in my career. And I think that it's also another provides rich opportunity, I think, to witness as well. I think one of the be- one of the benefits I think of like giving football scholarships to s- incoming students is the fact that whether they are Lutheran or not, one of their core classes has to be a theology class. Yep. And so, <laughs> incoming football players who maybe never this heard isn't a of- joke. This is not <laughs> a joke. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> like they have the chance to play ball, but this is maybe the first time that they've heard about Jesus in their whole entire lives. Yep. Like. You're you're pushing 20 years old and you don't know Jesus, but, you know, come play football for us and we'll tell you about Jesus. And so I don't really know what the success rate of making a non-Christian football player convert because they took (laughs) 3000 with Gary Bertles. Like, I don't know what the I don't know what the conversion rate is necessarily. (laughs) You know what, though? What does it matter? I mean, that's up to God. The the thing the, Holy the thing Spirit that is the one that does that, Marie. Come <laughs> on now. Fair enough. Sorry. The, Sorry. The thing that Concordia University is promised and deliver on is everyone who comes through the university is exposed to the gospel. Yeah. Yep. What they do with it is between them and the Spirit, and that's something you're not going to get sure. at a public university. Not in the I same mean, way. I, I don't know about. The, I can't attest to the other locations, but I know that Concordia Chicago was a huge commuter school. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. people yep. did not live on campus. They lived off campus. They mm-hmm. were not Lutheran. They were maybe not even Christian. They were just coming to get whatever degree, like a lot of teachers. Cause I mean, the teaching program was, was fantastic. Top notch, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it brought in a lot of people who we were able to, to witness to and, and, and testify to. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes exactly. by hearing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I do think that there are some cons, and I'm just going to finish it out with that, and then you guys can sort of <laughs> and weigh on in. a downer. And on a downer, <laughs> wah, wah. We are, I mean, we've already kind of covered it, but the the good news kind of is people wishing that they could go to. I, I got a lot of feedback of people who wished that they could go to a Concordia University, but didn't have the ability to. I think the top two reasons I think were geography. They didn't want to move far away from home, which is fine by me. That's fair. Mm-hmm. And the expense. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I have some, I had at least one respondent who almost is regretful in terms mm-hmm. of the amount of debt that they accrued in the four years mm-hmm. of being at a Concordia. I, <laughs> I am not a fan of the student loan debt that I accrued as a student there. Mm-hmm. Um, I received a good education, but I mean, I could have gone to SIUE and gotten my degree in communications there, and I would have spent on four years what I would spend in a year at a Concordia. Mm -hmm. And so I know that that can be a significant barrier, I think, especially Mm -hmm. as college age kids get a little wiser about what it means to accrue debt through student Mm -hmm. loans, Mm -hmm. um, that that is going to be a significant barrier, I think, to admission, whether or not you want to be that school teacher or that deaconess or a not sort of non-traditional major. And so I, I mean, I think the Concordia colleges and universities are kind of at a crossroads here in terms of, okay, how do we make this, how do we make this affordable? How do we attract people? Right. Um, how do we build up our roster 
so to speak, Um, because I think that that is probably the biggest obstacle that the admissions crisis is sort of facing right now. Mm -hmm. It is huge. As a mother who is going to be doing college visits next, you know, next year. Oh, my God. Goodness, wow. you guys, it's like coming up. Yeah. I don't know. But Pretty. anyway, we're already talking about what is going to be our long list that will turn into our short list of schools that we visit with our eldest. And it's a huge concern for, for her. For me, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, we had student debt and we paid it off and it's fine. She doesn't want, you know, crippling student debt at the end oh. of her college college yep. degree. And so that'll be something that we'll have to really think through hard. And I know that Concordia universities go above and beyond with the financial yep. aid to, to make it yep. possible for that to be as small a burden as it can be. Mm-hmm. But it's just a different scale when you're talking private versus public yeah. university education. Yeah. And that's something that we'll have to think about. I mean, I'm in, I'm in favor of it, but it's not my life. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this um, is a, a plug for all the grandparents out there. If you have the ability to set up a college fund for your, right. your grandbabies, do it. Do it. Mm-hmm. That is how I was able to afford going to mm-hmm. Concordia, Chicago, because yeah. my yeah. grandpa, when all three of my, I mean, when me and my two brothers were born, they nice. say, my grandpa put aside a college fund for all of us and we wow. didn't touch it until we went to college and that funded half of it and my parents funded part of it and I wow. worked and I ended up without any loans but yeah that is that's a story for everybody right that's, I, that's and not married, everyone's experience <laughs> I married into a family with loans so you know yep. I don't have <laughs> that um, Concordia <laughs> Nebraska so I mean <laughs> tight <laughs> I still have it finds loan. you right <laughs> But I, man, I wouldn't trade that education for yeah. anything now. I mean, that's great where I met my husband. I mean, I can't. Right at the end of the day, I can't. I, can't. It. I this is no the regrets. Old, yeah, that's the way I justify <laughs> the crippling student, student loan. Debt. <laughs> Just c- call it a dowry, and we'll. <laughs> that's fine. That is fine by me. That's that's all I got. I don't think that Lutheran education makes you a better or worse Lutheran or a Lutheran period. I think as we've all kind of seen how our journeys have taken us and where we've shaken out. But I do thank God for our wonderful Lutheran schools, high schools, universities, seminaries. Um, they are such a blessing to our rich culture and Without them, I think that this would be a much bleaker place. So I need to end this with a little story that answers your initial question, which was, does Lutheran education make you a Lutheran? (laughs) I don't know if it made you a Lutheran, but it made me a Lutheran. Because (gasps) when I went to Concordia, Ann Arbor, started out, I was barely Lutheran. I've been raised (laughs) Lutheran, but, you know, I think the year before I went to college, I split my time between a Lutheran church and a church of Christ. You know, it was not something that was super important to me. I went to Concordia Ann Arbor because I could run cross country and track there. It wasn't because it was Lutheran. It was close to home and I could run track. But by the time I graduated and I credit the the wonderful professors and the student life and especially Dr. Giese, who's no longer at Ann Arbor, he's down in Texas being awesome down there. (laughs) You know, those, those required general ed Bible and theology courses really helped me think through what I believed in a serious way for the first time as an adult. And by the time I graduated, I was very Lutheran and remained so to this day. Like you guys, I met my husband there. I got my, uh, I used to just roll my eyes when people would say, you're going to get your MRS degree. Got my MRS degree and I followed it up with a PhD. Putting (laughs) hobby through. (laughs) I purposely went to get an MRS degree. Not me. I was like, this is the one thing I'm not here for, but it happened anyway. But that's (laughs) happened anyway. It's been a huge blessing in my life, an ancillary benefit that is beyond beyond price. So I guess it's, speaking of that MRS degree, my cousin who did not go to a Lutheran school but went to another Christian university, there was a saying they had about that that I think applies to a lot of Concordias too, joking about the high rate of marriages that come out of that. (laughs) She says that this school is like a shoe shop. We we fix your souls and send you out in pairs. If someone is sharing a hymnal with somebody else in chapel, you know they're taken. Yeah, probably forever. 
<laughs> unlocked a piece of my brain that's been buried for yep. years. <laughs> you know somebody, wow. you know a couple is together if they're sharing a hymnal. That's right. And you know what? To this day, Luther and I still share a hymnal in oh church. Oh my gosh, because you guys are the cutest. <laughs> So all you Lutheran parents and grandparents and aunties and uncles and, you know, spiritual great grandparents out there, you know, if you if you have the opportunity to support one of your Lutheran young people in Lutheran education, it can come with some real blessings. Yes, it's true. Well, ladies. Brie already had her polls up, but that was on her own social media. So if you have your own stories about your experience in Lutheran elementary or secondary education, we would love to hear them mm -hmm. in our Facebook group. We I, Concordia people are a very proud bunch yes. and a very proud of our individual Concordias. That's so true. we can do a little Concordia shout out on the yeah. page and hopefully not start any fights about which Concordia is best. Chicago. Ann Arbor. Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. <Cougars. laughs> have infighting in, uh, among the four of us too. Mm. Uh, so we'd love to hear those stories. Join our group on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. You can also share your stories on your Instagram. Tag us at Lutheran Ladies Lounge on Instagram and we'll share those stories onto our story. You can find all of our podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge Podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. Concordia, Chicago. Are you Charlie T. Cougar? Yes. <laughs> Go Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie oh, she T. has the Cougar. last laugh. <laughs> the last word is very important. <laughs> Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies' Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge. I don't know. Concordia that's... Chicken, were you there for that? There that was, was my good. senior year, I th yes. either my senior year or the year after. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, the Concordia chicken. <laughs>